on life as we see it. The discussion about life is never ending. It is such that you keep taking one bit after another. It's like taking a grain from the seashore. It never ends. It just continues. And that's the beauty of life. Today, we're going to be delving into, um, I will call it the length and breadth of a conversation that you have been waiting to be part of. And uh, it excites me more especially because I have a guest in the house all the way from Rwanda. Uh, some of us who have traveled to Rwanda know how beautiful Rwanda is and how much of a history the nation of Rwanda has. Welcome to the show, Olam. You're very, very welcome. Thank you, Charles. I'm very happy to be here. And um, greetings from Rwanda, the land of the Thousand Hills. So wow. here you will experience peace. <laughs> Amazing. That's, 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 what, that's, what, that's, what, wow. that's what I say, Rwanda, peace. So what's the connection between uh, these hills and then Enugu in Nigeria? Enugu is a state in uh, Nigeria, West Africa. <laughs> <laughs> For those joining in from all over the world. <laughs> well, <laughs> Maybe there is a connection somewhere, but I'm unaware right now. <laughs> okay. I meant to say, like, is Rwanda a hilly place? You know, there are many yes, hills. Yes, it is. Uh -huh. Yes, it is. It's very hilly. Um, so, but the good thing is that they built around the hills. So, um, you, you find that even your house, you can, maybe you just see the ground floor. I mean, you will just wow. see the house, but when you enter, you can now go down and find that it's two two floors down. I am on a on a on a flat place, but I'm on the third floor, so we still have underground. And then also for for taking walks, and then of course for the, the road tea here, so you can climb all the way up to to the hills, you know, to where you can find the uh, road tea. And then when you travel. When you travel up country, that's when you see how they have been able to build their roads around the, the hills. It's a very interesting place. Wow. Yeah. wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Olama John Abaje is the chief operating officer of Access Bank all the way in Rwanda. Um, Olama, the people dialed in from different parts of the world, uh, they would love to know who is Olama. Just tell us who you are without ends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Olava is just a very simple lover of God. So if you know me, you know that the number one thing that um, I know that it's about me is that I love God and God loves me simply. Like you rightly said, I'm CEO of Access Bank Rwanda. And um, I, so let me, a bit of my education, I, I have a master's degree from BSN. Um, I'm also ISO certified. I also have a, um, a PhD in digital business. I'm also a certified life coach. And then I'm also a convener of um, women in true worship. And I'm a lover of people. I'm an encourager of people. That's my calling. So that's me. <laughs> wow. Of everything you said, what will excite the audience the most is the encourager of people. You know, Ola, yeah. there's so much discouragement in the world. We, you know, someone said to me the other time, don't cost the darkness, just light the candle. So, ladies and yeah. gentlemen, the person who will light the candle the right in the room, she is an encourager. And in a moment, I'm going to be reading the life class that has brought her here, and she'll be sharing from the depth of her thoughts, her heart, from her word, what this life class means and how it resonates with her. Olama, we can't um, hide our joy for having you come here to join us today. In a bit, you're going to be hearing uh, a background music that will usher in the life class and the conversation for today. Ladies and gentlemen, is the life class with Charles. 
Is the performance over? Life is a play acted on a stage. Every phase is a scene. Some scenes are fast, some are slow. Some scenes make you cry and some make you laugh. You can never understand the play from one scene. While the audience may be confused, the scriptwriter is always amused, and the actors must keep acting. Some things do not make sense in your life today, yet your life can still make great meaning tomorrow, as long as you remain in the play. The ovation of the audience is loudest at the end of the play not at the end of the scene. Why do you want to return to the scene? Why do you not want to return to the scene? Is the performance over? No, it is not. Life class, the charts. Very Hold interesting. <laughs> I mean, what was going through your mind when I did that? <laughs> Tell me. Okay, thank you, Charles. Um, um, this completely resonates, you know, with me. And honestly, um, it's probably the story of my life. In the sense that um, I've, it's a, it's, my life is like... A performance, you know, and I, and I want to break it into. I'll have to talk about myself. I'm going to. I'm going to talk about myself. Yes. Um, I may end up being vulnerable, but I, I will. I like I say, I'm an encourager, so I'm going to talk about myself. So I, I'm going to break it into my education, and then I'll break it into my career. So, like I previously said, it completely resonates with me. But I want to start by saying that um, when I was much younger, I was in a choir. I was in the church choir for so many wow. years. Yeah. So I understand the fact that you have a conductor, you know, that stands in front of you and is conducting. And one of the things you have to do as a choir, as a singer in a part, is you have to obey. The conductor so the conductor knows how they want to arrange the song right. so it's your role to go through so sometimes you've been told oh you're going to sing both parts three times if the conductor says continue you have to continue right. because the conductor probably has something in mind so when you rehearsed you had um, something in mind you were told it's going to be for two seconds and before you know it it's going to be for five seconds you have to obey so that's that paints the picture for me somehow but the issue here is who is the conductor the holy spirit so who is the composer god who is the um conductor the holy spirit the holy spirit so the Holy Spirit interprets what the composer has. I mean, the, the conductor interprets what the composer wants and how it's going to flow. So for us, we may not understand why there is a change, but it's our, we find that it's our role because we have submitted to the conductor. I willingly submitted, so I have to play along. The same way in an orchestra. The orchestra backs the crowd and is facing you and is conducting. You have submitted to this conductor, so your life flows along. The same way in the drama. If in the course of the drama there needs to be a swift change, you have to adjust. Now, 
there is also a process of preparation. There's a process of preparation. And in the course of your preparation, there is sweat. You will cry sometimes. You will weep. You will laugh. You will smile. You will be confused because you've read the script. You expect that the script is going to go in a certain way. And the director says, no, this is the way it should go. You have submitted to that director because you are there. You say, I want to act in this drama. It's your, right. your the part you have to play is to just submit and allow it to flow. And that's basically how life works, especially when you're submitted to the Holy Spirit. And because I am a Christian, you want to say, you want to make a comment? No, 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 go ahead. Okay. So because I'm a Christian, and because that's the way I live my life, I, I, um, I will talk, I will say a lot about the Holy Spirit and how he guides me and how he leads me and God yes. my Father. So one of the things that I've always known is that God loves me. So, so even though I have gone through situations in my life, I always tell people that, don't worry, me and God, you know how we do with each other. So let me, let me start from um, when I was in secondary school. Yes. I, when I finished primary school, I was supposed to get into secondary school. And um, I, I wrote uh, the common entrance. Right. And I passed, but the list came out. I, I couldn't get into school. And then I had to go to this uh, model college that was in Mushi. Right. I couldn't believe it at the deal. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, but I, I went, you know, and um, I, but I knew, I knew that that wasn't, that wasn't me. I knew that wasn't what I wanted. And, but I also knew that God was going to sort me out. So from an early age, my father, my father says to me that, um, he talked a lot about my faith, how I had so much faith. So let me backtrack a bit. I grew up from a very humble background, very happy family. There was joy, there was laughter. There's still joy and laughter. And but the money was hard. So, so I, I learned my faith grew then because I needed to pray for a lot of things. That was all I knew. So anyway, so <laughs> eventually I went into this, but I believed and I was different. I was acting different. I remember when the, the headmistress called me once and said, you act so different. I said, yes, because I'm going to federal government girls college. I knew that. Eventually, it took a while. My classmates had started school and eventually I was accepted into the school and I went into the school. So there was a bit of a delay but I got into secondary school. Now I finished my secondary school and then it's time to go into university. I, I wrote my JAMB exams and um, I applied for banking and finance. Right, oh, interesting. I, and then my, my JAMB uh, score came out and I was below the cutoff. So I went to school to Unilag. I finished from Unilag, I went to Unilag. And I saw that I was below the cutoff. And, you know, the department was like, oh, no, uh, this uh, it won't work and all of that. So I got a recommendation that, okay, why don't you go and try estate management? They are taking people there. So I went there and I went to see the dean. And the man says to me, oh, fine, we will take you. Interestingly, I, I had a colleague who had exactly a classmate who had exactly the same scores with me, but she was accepted into banking and finance. Wow. And then, yeah, so I now went to estate management and the dean had said to me, oh, we will accept you. And then the battle began. began. And I kept going, today my name is on the list, tomorrow my name is not on the list. I'll go and see everybody, but my name was there. You know, so there is that's the delay coming in. 
and uh, oh, I will cry, I will go there, I will go and see this person. They will say, ah, but your name was there. Oh, sorry. So eventually, it took almost the whole um, first semester, maybe one third of the first semester. So my, my son used to be a boner, and right. my matric is almost maybe the second to the last. So I went through that delay again to get into um, university. Hmm. So, but I kept, um, okay, my apology, let me go back a bit. When I was accepted into secondary school, you recall I said that um, money was tough. There right. was no school fees. <laughs> so now, <laughs> so now it's time to go. <laughs> You've been told to come. There was no school fees. <laughs> so my father said, well, I'm going to come and pray that prayer of faith and of God. I went back to God and I prayed and I prayed. And there was this business that my mom had done maybe years ago. And they suddenly called her and said, oh, come and pick up the check. So my mom picked up the check on Tuesday, yeah. By, I think, Friday, I had, um, the the check had cleared there. But anyway, the check cleared the following day. That was how I was able to go to secondary school. And at very challenging times, God gets me through. So let me go back to my university days. So I was almost the, the last person to to get into class. Really Shoot. very challenging. Yeah. Really very challenging to even get into say, but I knew that I wasn't going to write jam again. I wouldn't write jam again. Because I knew who the conductor was at that very early age. I knew who the conductor was. I I I didn't I said I wasn't going to write jam again. I said I wasn't going to write holy jam. My apology to people that went to Polytechnic, but I said right. I would do it. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, I, I insisted that I was going to wait. And God, you know, saw me through. And went through um, university and then very, of course, tough financially and all of that. Um, and then I came out from the um, second um, university. And then I started looking for a job. No, I didn't even look for a job. I, um, I, you, during youth service, I was posted to a company, and I knew that, I knew the politics of the company. So I just went, I said, I came to be rejected. <laughs> they couldn't believe it. <laughs> So, so they just rejected and then and then I left. And then I, I went to my brother's house at the sitting room. And then another brother of mine came and said, Oh, there's this bank that is recruiting. Maybe you should try. I called another friend of mine. I said, Let's go. And that's how we got there. And that's how I joined the banking industry. So <laughs> So you understand, I wasn't accepted into banking and in a right. That's how I joined the banking industry in 1998. Wow. Wow. And yeah, that was how I joined the banking industry. And you know, and then so before I go to my career, I want to talk about my masters. So okay. in um, nine, 1999. I decided to start my master's immediately. And then 2000, then I, I did 1999, I did 2000, I got married in 2001. And then I had issues with my pregnancy. So I had to, so I had gotten to the point where I was supposed to do my seminar, I was supposed to do my project, and I couldn't. So I couldn't do my master's. So I had four attempts at doing a master's. <laughs> so I so you can imagine how um 
how it seemed like what's happening here i tried the first one i couldn't finish it i tried the second one this was now a foreign uh, masters right. in the process i fell ill i would also talk about that in the process i fell ill and i was ill for about two years so i couldn't complete that i tried the third, the third attempt here the third attempt again it didn't um they said I plagiarized and I got offended or I got upset and I dropped it. Then I tried the fourth one. <laughs> and then if I just kept telling myself, no, I will do it. I will do it. And eventually I was able to, 19 years after wow. my first attempt, yes. 19 years after my first attempt, I eventually concluded this. And in fact, when I was doing it, it was like in the class, I'm sure they'll they, they be like, what's pursuing this person? I look at them as if we don't know what's pursuing me. I was just, I was, I was on my toes, you know, trying to make sure that I finally conclude this. I knew I was going to do it. And I eventually, you know, did that. So let me now, sorry. I want, I want you to hold a thought, Ola, because what you yes. just said yes. now about 19 years, you yes. know, the, 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 the life class said, is the performance over? You kept going back yes. for that masters, all right? And I want to talk about that because there are people who are listening in now who tried and failed and right now, they lack the courage to try again because they are afraid or ashamed of failing. You yeah. know, naturally, when people try something and they succeed, it gives them courage to try for something higher. Yeah. But when they try and fail, <laughs> the courage to try again, <laughs> you know, reduces. If they try a second yeah. time and fail, it keeps reducing. I want to know yeah. what worked for you and kept you going for 19 years. People want to know. <laughs> okay, I, I could be very determined. determined. I could be, so, okay, aside from being determined, I have a clear picture in my head. Oh. I have a very clear picture in here. Yeah, I have a clear picture in my head of where I want to be where i'm going and i believe that for for where you want to get to there are some things you need to do to get to where you are going to i will pay the price now diligence hard work putting in consistency discipline those are things that are my values. So I will keep trying. I will keep trying. Even if I, I self-motivate a lot. I self-motivate a lot. So even, yeah, I do. So even when there is discouragement, right. will I cry? Yes, I will. Will I go back and put my head on the bed and say, what, what kind of life is this? Yes, I will. But I will pick myself up again and I will go again. And so it was that self. And then you surround yourself with people of like mind, people that are going in a particular direction. My sister has two masters now. So my father believes that you have a PhD. <laughs> so you surround. So when you are having conversations with people, that are going in the same direction as you. You you realize that you have to move. The people who are people that that surround you, who are your friends, who are your closest allies, people that you are holding yourself together and going in a particular direction. So even when you are um, discouraged or when you you, you don't want to move, there should be some people pulling you up and saying, no, you can't stay. So those are things that motivated me. I was in a class once when 
um, somebody said she was, um, I think she had joined the C-suite and she was saying, but she doesn't have the relevant qualifications and, you know, um, she felt uncomfortable. At the end of the day, the conversation she had with the person was, do you feel less of a person if you if you if you're okay with it fine in my head i was saying you know when you're sitting you're watching but in my mind i was shaking my head yeah i'm not okay with it i'm not okay with it i'm still going to finish this thing so it was just a um i just had a clarity of where i wanted to go now recall i said um i was also from a background where Things were financially, there was so much love, but you know, food, <laughs> food was an issue. So, right. and then I had friends, not even friends. I, I, I recall one, one, um, I recall one incident where there was this governor that the children came to visit in Lagos, and they took me. I took them shopping. And they were buying and buying and buying. And, and I looked at it and said, do you know that they didn't buy anything for me? Wow. <laughs> As in, then I recall, I always talk about Jagan's, Jagan's cream. They bought Jagan's cream. And I looked at this people. I said, Jesus. And I cannot afford this cream. And I told myself, you see this Jagan's cream? I will buy it in cartons. <laughs> so... <laughs> So honestly, I had I, I had a clear picture. And thank God, thank God for favor, because ultimately you can also have all that, you know, clear mindset. But the favor of God has also been on me all the way, and that's the thing. So, so this is interesting because I, I I made a list of the things that you said worked for you in those nineteen years. You spoke yes. of determination, but there's something yes. you said about focus. You had a picture in your mind about yes. the future. So yes. when you have a picture of your future, it doesn't matter what life paints. Correct. Until it matches the picture you have the painting that must continue correct correct now there, there's some people all are who it may not be an examination but they've tried at something and they are not seeing results now for these people it may be that they have read where it says if you try something and it doesn't work maybe it's not for you Go do something yeah. else. What are your yeah. thoughts about? It? Okay, so I um I will I, I will agree that if you try something, right, that it may not be good for you. And the reason why I, I, will, I will say that is, um, I have two two examples I could give. Right. So that when I was in the choir. There was a lady who had tried so many things. And I said to her, is it possible that you should, you can try this? I also have discernment. So I, I told right. her, is it possible that you can you could try this? And honestly, what I said to her then was an executive secretary. Be a secretary. So, so anybody that looks secretary, but be the best secretary. Right. Yeah, be the best P. Now it's a nice word, P. But be the best secretary. Just try and let's see. And honestly, when I see she 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 sent me an invite on LinkedIn a few days ago, and and I remembered, and I just smiled. And she tried this, and it worked. So, cancel as well. 
what pray about it let the holy spirit direct you you may be trying to, you may be doing something that you are not very good at but i but once you can identify something that um you find to do do it with all diligence the second person when we were in school there was this guy a friend of ours who had who wanted to be a doctor and he kept writing so everybody's anybody that is close to me that is listening to this, uh, is listening to this will remember this story and he kept every he's joining everybody's matric he's joining everybody's matric eventually the first year he tried law in exams he got him he spent seven years trying to be a doctor the first year he tried law he got him and he's a lawyer today so sometimes wow. you may be trying yeah that's why i said because i have those examples i will say i will say that um if you are doing if you are doing something and you're not succeeding take a step back and ask yourself is this what i should really be doing especially when your heart is not right so what i mean is if, if you are doing a particular thing and your heart is not right now the reason why you are not succeeding is not because you are lazy it's not because you are slothful it's not because you are not consistent disciplined it's because your heart is not right your heart just because the conductor the holy spirit is telling you try this so my thoughts are shift and try and see if you are led by the spirit of god say trust in the lord with all your heart lean not onto your own understanding in all your ways that acknowledge him and he will direct your path so trust that he will direct your path on the other oh, hand Go ahead. Go ahead. On the other hand, I, I don't want I want that thought to land. Okay. So on the other hand, you may be doing something that um you are not it seems as if you are not succeeding in. I will give myself an ex as an example. So it seems as if you are putting in all, you are doing everything and it's just not working. Check your heart. So the, my husband said to me once, said, what you don't, what you don't honor will not bless you. So there was a time when, I mean, we understand the banking industry and how the pressure can be so much. So I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this, you know? You get so angry, you get so bitter, you get so frustrated with the whole thing, and you, you spend more time being bitter and angry. So what is happening is because you are getting angry, you are bitter, you are frustrated, you will realize that that thing is not blessing you. So what do you do? You, mag you start magnifying it. You, you give it honor, honor of your time, honor of gratitude gratitude that i even have this thing to do i may not be blossoming or i may not it may not be like i'm i'm succeeding so much but i am grateful i know that with time all of my appointed time will i wait until my change comes right. so i'm 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 just patiently waiting sowing the seeds diligently sowing right. the seeds diligently right one day right. one day the air will come and one day it just explodes and people will say oh what happened is what you have put in so they are so i'm giving two answers but how will you know what to do is the right. conductor right the Holy Spirit. Okay. So this is one of the reasons why this wow. sounds really bewildering for some people is they, they will have questions in their hearts that right in front of us is somebody who wanted to read banking, 
the first wanted to go to a particular secondary school and then there were slight delays but eventually got there wanted to study banking but got into estate management eventually got into a bank and is rising to the top in the banking sector started a master's program didn't get the result that she wanted and started four different master's programs over a period of 19 years until she got what she wanted so it looks like in different stages and phases you've been in that point where oh it wasn't banking i read estate management i didn't insist on banking and then i wanted a master's i wanted masters come song come rain i'm getting this masters so 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 you you know people belong to these two worlds and the 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 the, the, the deal breaker here is the heart are you trying to tell us and um i say this without prejudice all of that yeah you may be doing the you may be doing all the right things but if your heart is not in it you wouldn't get the fulfillment that you seek i want you to walk us through what it means for a person's heart to be in the pursuit why would you write jam for seven times like that doctor or that lawyer my learned friend <laughs> you know and then go to read law can we what, do we say his heart wasn't there or, you know you know walk me around it it's live class ladies and gentlemen don't before she answers the question don't forget you can connect with us and share your questions on any one of the platforms where you're listening in right now i'm monitoring all the platforms you have a question an observation uh a contribution just share it in the chat box and i will take it and share it with our guests as well you know let's know also where you're dialing in from all right so Ola, tell me this hat thing okay. <laughs> okay so you said okay so for, for my dear friend right my assumption will be um the hype so um, I'm, I'm also trying to be, I'm also trying to balance my response. Um, there is also safety in multitude of, you know, in a comp company of good um, counselors. So with, with my friend, he probably wanted to, maybe that was what, um, his heart was there, correct. But maybe that wasn't the right thing for him at that point in time. But let, let me talk about the heart. And I'm going to use myself as, as an example. Um, let me use myself as an example because yeah. that's, I know myself the best. And, I, and I'm going to bring it to my career. So I started my my career, and um, the first few years, I you know quickly rose, joined um, joined a bank, and um, I joined a bank, and then I was there for a few years, and then I had my baby. And while I was there, all of a sudden, um, I took in again. You know, then in the banking industry, then if you have um, children in quick succession, you understand how it affects your, your career. So I joined, um, so same following year after that, I was pregnant again, alas. So, <laughs> and then I was told, I was asked to, to resign right. then i came back okay then I, I worked in an estate uh, firm for a while and then i came back into the banking industry and then i worked in an organization where i was putting in everything i was doing everything i was you know i i set up one of their branches where I set up, 
I was told, oh, oh, you have the experience. Okay, so let me let me go back a bit, and and, and I well, let me tell you why I'm focusing on the hat. So I went I when I they, where I was asked to resign, I had been I was sure I was getting promoted, and I was getting promoted to an assistant manager level at that years ago. So when I came back into the industry, I, I went back, I went down two steps. I went, yeah. And I was so, that my first day, I had a headache. Wow. Wow. I was reporting to my junior and secondary school. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to love this. <laughs> And interesting part is that the first they said, Auntie Ola, you do <laughs> you can imagine. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. <laughs> so I had a headache. I went to my dad and said, I'm not going to do this. But he encouraged me and I went back. So one of the things I did was there's something I've always believed in. And I've always worked from my heart. And um, it has, it has, I may not, yeah, you will find that people do all sorts of things. I'm not saying that's the perfect, that's the perfect um, formula, mm -hmm. but I've always believed in certain in man, diligent, in his ways he will stand before kings and not mean men so right. i've always worked like that so i put in everything i put in everything i put in everything so when we check the promotion list i'm the one checking for the whole team control find hey, I promoted. then i'll control find all oh, my name is not there and that happened for yeah that happened rolling over rolling over rolling over was i was doing everything that i needed to do i was meeting my numbers i was getting awards and now so when i go and say oh, what happened now they say oh, what happened? Yeah, but he uses man now <laughs> so and uh, so we did the did i start getting upset and angry yeah in the process i didn't understand what was happening what is happening here so back to is the performance over but right. honestly honestly yeah so on monday morning we do all that search we check if the name is not there the following day for one or two days i i clean up and then i continue the work i continue the work i i, I continue working as if I'm, I'm working for myself. So I, there's right. th this thing I say, I say I work for myself. That's what I tell people, I, I tell people I work for myself. And I and so whatever I'm doing, I'm putting in 100 and an additional percent to it. Wow. So yeah, so, um, so I continued and all of that and I had my third child. And the first week after my maternity, resumption from maternity, my supervisor says, oh, let's go for a presentation. And we go to, we get to that presentation. He, I wasn't presenting, he just said, go come with me. Right. And we get to the place and I start lactating and I stepped out. Eventually I was asked to resign. Wow. Yeah. After I had put in so much, you understand? Yes. So let me now backtrack a bit. I had received a, I'd received, I had been called to an, um, where I work now, they had called me for an interview. I don't know how they got my CV, I don't know, but they had called me for an interview, yeah. And I, I, I went, I went to, I did everything. In fact, while I was in that interview, my boss called me and said, where are you? 
At me, I don't know how to lie. I told him where I was. <laughs> and he said, Oh, you think I'm flogging you with uh, with rope? They will flog you with shackles there. I said, Well, I'm here. So that you, you will respect me. Rehoboam and uh, Solomon. Sorry? Rehoboam and Solomon, you know, when he said, My father, yeah. I flogged you with yeah. Yeah. I'm flogging you with shackles. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, anyway, I came back. Um, so when I was asked to, to resign, this, remember this is my second ask to resign. Yes. So I I came back and so I had I tried everything. I went to appeal. I, I'm a nursing mother. I was lactating. I couldn't stay. Blah blah blah. And they insisted you have to go. In fact, knocked me off the system. And you can imagine how that felt for me. Haven't put in so much. So the, the alternative was to get bitter, was to get angry. Yes. But after it was, I remember it was an Easter weekend. By the um by the following week. I now remember that uh -uh, people invited me for interview now. <laughs> you know, I still looking for the offer letter because I had not accepted the offer letter. Wow. So see how God orchestrated this thing. He saw it. He saw it. And he made sure that there was a, a buffer, there was an alternative. So remember that I had stayed in the other place for so many years without promotion. I got in to, so immediately, interestingly, as I was leaving the previous one, as I was coming out, I get a call that, oh, um, the DM then wants to see you. And I was just two doors away. I said, oh, I'm just around the corner. And I went and, and that was how I accepted the offer. And, and then I, I immediately moved. Upon confirmation, I was promoted. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I got I got a, of course I got a higher level upon confirmation I was promoted and then I, I I you know continued to work and then I started getting very so I I started getting I got to a point where I started getting frustrated I started getting angry I started getting bitter I hated the job hmm. I wanted to leave, so I even scored myself um, the lowest appraisal score so that I would be asked to go. Because wow. since my husband will not allow me to resign, let me come home and say they told me to go now. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Never heard that before. <laughs> but my good friend refused. <laughs> my good friend said no. <laughs> So when we come back, the, the, when the appraiser came back, it was good again. I was like, what can I do? But this I felt very happy. And um, I hope I haven't derailed from the question, but I also hope that oh, this, yeah, this, 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 this is Hold also up. helping someone. Right. So I um, so that was the period where I now fell ill. And Honestly, that period was a reset for me. I fell ill and um, I ended up in a hospital abroad. And I was there for, I was in a hospital bell, bed. So you can imagine, I didn't plan to go to hospital. I went visiting and then I broke down and I was in the hospital. So. While everybody else, when they come to check everybody in the ward the following day, and they're checking everybody, me, I'm thinking about the bill. I'm like, how much that this is what you're giving a day? I don't even want to talk about the bill, but it was something else. As at then, by the time we had done, it was as at 2011, it was equivalent of 10 million naira. Wow. Yeah. And, but I knew that there was a resetting going on in me. I knew 
there was a resetting going on in me. So that anger, that, you know, getting angry, getting bitter, getting upset, because I looked at my career, I was like, what is all of this? I've put in so many years and I know how I work and this is just not what I expected. I mean, you know, you see your, your colleagues, you're like, Look at this much you get coming to talk to me like you know all those those uh, feelings but i knew that there was a reset going on and that period that i stayed there it, it was it was just a reset it was a transformation the way my thinking my thoughts the way i started seeing things I became very grateful for the things that I had. Wow. The most interesting part of it was that the last day when I was discharged from the, okay, so let me tell you one funny part. So when they are doing the roll call in the morning, they will say, hola, John, I think I was about 39 then. They will say 39 female, she cannot afford to pay her bills. <laughs> Are you kidding so, me? So that was like, because they will call everybody else. <laughs> they will call everybody else because they asked me for my insurance. They said, I didn't call for insurance. I just came to spend a few days. So anyway, so the, the, the most interesting part of it was that on the last day, they came and they gave me the, the, the paper. So of course, I was like, finally, let me see how much they charge me. So when when they when the consultants come and they are standing in front of me, I'll be like, one, two, three, four, five consultants. How much am I paying this for? <laughs> so there was even a mister. And I'm like, ah, mister again. So, but you know the interesting part? On the last day, when they gave me the paper, I looked at it. It was a referral note. My bill was waived. Wow. Did he? Wow. Yeah. The bill was waived. In fact, for me to go to that country, there was a time I went to that country and they sent me letters. I said, ah, oh, these people have caught me. I, it was unbelievable. <laughs> it was wow. unbelievable. Yeah. It was unbelievable. And that was the process that God took me through. He just took me there to go rest and then not just to go rest he he needed to purge my heart wow. of all that anger the bitterness and everything that i went through so eventually i i, I eventually now for the first time resigned by myself because i i, I was trying to recuperate because right. I was um, I was given some medication that needed to be tapered, so I needed to recuperate and all of that. And I eventually resigned and did a bit of um, business. And a few months later, I had a conversation with one of my senior bosses, and he's like, "You have to come back." And I'm like, "How?" I I can't. Um, so I was in market facing then. And he says, um, you have to come do operations. I've never done operations before. Remember, I started banking in 1999. This was 2012. I've never done operations before. I've never done operations before. And he says, just come and have some conversations. And that was how I came back. And that year that I came back, I came back in September. In February, I was promoted. Wow. So, so those years that were lost, you can see how God orchestrated my removal from that place to where you can start. And then how he had to take me through that process of for preparation to where he's taking me to. So I got in and I, and I went through I mean, this the person who I spoke with, I wasn't even working with him directly. 
The person who, read, who said come back, I wasn't even working with him. So I, 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 I got back and I moved to, I moved into operations. I remember having a conversation with one of my supervisors. He called me and said, oh, so if they ask me who I'm going to hand over to, who is my backup, it's you. I said, but I don't even know anything about the operation. So I pointed out to people, I said, this is this, this. He said, no, you are the one. You are the one that I've said that is going to be my backup. You are the one that is going to do it. And that was how, before I knew it, by God's grace, I bubbled up, I bubbled up, I bubbled up. And when um, there was now, okay, who are the people that are going to be zona head? I was picked. In fact, there was one incident that happened. We had a new supervisor that came in. And he immediately, because he heard that I had been in marketing, he moved me back to marketing. And I called him, I said, you haven't even worked with me. Why are you moving me? You haven't even worked with me. Just give me a chance. And a few months after that, he had given me a place just a walking distance from my house. And wow. that was how, yeah. So it, it bubbled up, bubbled up, and I got into a lot of projects, favor, and during the integration, I was very, you know, quite vital. And then this opening now came. So this opening on its own again was another miracle. Um, even though I say a miracle, even though I say a miracle, remember I had prepared for it. Right. So, yeah. I had gone through that period of preparation. Remember, I had, I had insisted I must do this my master's. So imagine yes. that I'm here now. Yeah, imagine that I'm here now. And they, before I got confirmed here, they had to, it took seven months. There had to be a verification done. They had to check my, my they had to check my qualification. Now, imagine that I didn't have the required qualification. I would have just wasted this opportunity because I will not be the right person to be here. So I had so I had gotten to a place where, so even when, when I became a zona head, I had six colleagues of mine who had been on a, on a particular level for so many years, doing the same thing. I mean, being, not being promoted for so many years. And I said to them, I have been where I have sat when you are sitting, so I understand. That's right. right. I'm the best person to tell you I understand. When people say, oh, I understand, oh, sorry, I understand. They may not, but me, I've sat at that seat. I know how it feels. So I said to them, walk with me. Walk with me. Let's do this. I assure you, you will get your promotion if we can. Let's do this thing together. And by the grace of God, all of them wow. got their promotion that year. I recall there was one that I called from the beginning of VI to the end of Third Milan Bridge, telling her what to do. Because now I understand. So now I know that one of the reasons why I went through, I have been through that process, I always say that. When people say, why me? Right. I say, why not you? Because it's a privilege. There's pain, no? I won't say it's funny. No? There's pain. But God will sacrifice his son so that he can save many more. So God looks at you. So he needs to prepare your heart so that when he's going through, when you're going through all that, all those issues that you're going through, your heart is in the right place. Now he needs to deliver many more. So it's a privilege to be selected, to be the one that will go through that process. So when it is time, you can pull many more. So even when I was telling a friend of mine, he said, even when I'm going through my own situations, right. immediately I see somebody else that is going through all of that. I drop my own and I start pulling the person up. 
I start encouraging. So, so I'm the one that if you are telling me, oh, sorry, sorry, I'm the one that will be encouraging you, you know, in the whole process. So that my own formula, which I I I, I, I believe has worked, right. is your heart has to be in the right place. If if your heart is not in the right place, you cannot be diligent, you cannot be disciplined, you cannot be consistent, and that thing will not bless you. So even if there is a delay, right? Uh, I, I can assure you, I've experienced a lot of delays. Even if there is a delay, the process. What did you learn from that process? There is a there's something that you need to learn from that process. So if you focus on the delay and say, right. oh, I should be here, I should be there, you will miss it. There is something. So at the end of it, you will now realize that, oh, so this is why I went through what I went through. What more I can say? OK, so let me let me give you that 20 level. Right. Remember that I, I had planned that I would be asked to go. So I scored myself a deal. Now, <laughs> so now this happened. Yeah, so this happened in in February, and then I fell ill, so yes. I couldn't work. But I was earning my salary. Okay. This boss of mine, very tough guy, he said, "I will not allow you." And he jacked and he gave me my true position, and. That singular act helped me to survive for one year. So imagine that I had gone, I had resigned because of my emotions or because I was angry. And then I felt, wow. how will I have See, that one year, I, my salary, everything was paid. Wow. I didn't, there was no, yeah, there was no loss. So I see how God just directs our path. And then I didn't pay that, uh, that high bill and all of that. And honestly, so here I am today in, in a union. In fact, when I, when I came back, when I, when I came back, the day I came to sign my letter to come back, the lady who, who um, the HR lady said she wanted to meet with me that who, why, that they allowed this lady to move from market facing to operations, that she wanted to know who this person is, because it's a very rare thing to allow you to move like that at this level and all of that. She wanted to, to meet me and, and all of that. So um, honestly, I, 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 I believe there's something I always just conquer it first. Conquer it, that's what I always say, conquer it. And then put in the work. You will go through, you may not be as smooth as you would. That's life. It's never been as smooth as, but that process, that process, there are so many lessons. And the state in which your heart is, is so important. It's not, um, it's not being a psychophant, it's not, been um boot leaking or anything it's right. just put, right. make sure making sure that your heart is in the right place and honestly with time with time with time with time everything things will just start falling into place and then people will just think that oh you just sprouted from something no yeah you have gone through the fire you have gone through the flood you have gone through the pain but you were still smiling you were still smiling. smiling. Yeah. You were still thanking God. You were still grateful. So even if um your, your the little that you are earning, you are grateful, you are thankful, you keep focusing on what God has done for you all through that period. Honestly, when you just people will wonder hey, where did you come? Through the process, they have allowed the conductor 
and you now get to that place where there is an ovation but you allowed yourself guess what if you if you leave if you leave um during the performance if right. you walk out you have a right to walk out yes. is going to, you have a right to walk out but when the ovation comes you won't be there which is which is the sad part which is the sad part Paula, because i see people sending in comments and um how insightful the conversation has been you know and i can see how this really does resonate again with those people who are saying hey i've been in this situation and it looks like you're talking to me because wow. from their feedback I, I can then begin to imagine i have never had this uh, number of stories put into an art so many <laughs> stories you know it seems like from one state to another there's always something so everyone is holding with battered bread don't say anything we want to hear what's about to happen what's the wow. story this time you know? and that's really the reason behind the life class because we want to tell our life stories related with the life class and connect the dots for people no theory practical experiences when you were talking and you spoke about the heart i needed you to shed light on the heart because it seemed like you had been through a process where the it's the you had to go through a heart surgery so that right. all the bitterness all the anger all the frustrations mm -hmm. you know were, were thrown out and then you had the heart that i would call it the lion's heart for the jungle you know yeah. it's interesting because you said something about what your husband that whatever you do not honor you can be blessed by it you were in a place where you deserved to be blessed you deserve to be promoted you had done the work but it wasn't coming and then your heart yeah. changed so god needed to put your heart right you needed that heart so ladies and gentlemen we're talking about the life class with charles is the performance over you have a right to walk off the stage but the fact that you have a right doesn't make it right correct i can leave i can quit is the performance over hmm. Ola, you have poured your heart out to us on this subject what is left on the inside that you think our guests our viewers need to know okay so the, the story continues interestingly it continues so after i, I got here i've also reskilled so um one of the days one of my mentor sent uh, put something on him so this is now the aspect of sensitivity so she right. put up in the whatsapp group um, the a training that um, we should go for she she felt we should go through interestingly that that training was for a um, certain level and above but she gave us that opportunity and i was the only person that um, took it on and i went ahead and i and i did the program so um and when I, upon graduation, you know, with uh, I, I put it on LinkedIn, and yeah, and I've been receiving, getting some speaking invitations, and all of that, you know, from there. So honestly, I believe that that opportunity was for me alone. And I was the one that was sensitive enough to pick to pick it, and honestly, it has opened you know so many doors for me. Last week, um, I won an award as the through that process, um, process. I won an award as the best CEO in East Africa. So it's um, yeah. So <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> so ladies um, and gentlemen, in the room. <laughs> yeah be in the room so on so let me also balance it a bit sometimes and 
I will still link it. Um, I'm not saying stay there and die. I'm not saying so. But I'm saying be sensitive to your conductor. So the conductor may say, oh, we're not going this direction again. This is the direction you are going. And that direction may be towards this way. So it's your duty to be sensitive enough and to be obedient to your conductor and say, this is the direction I am going. So one of the things I was sensitive about was to know that, oh, it's time to reskill. So it's time to take do this program. And then I, I moved, I went towards that. I did another um, certification also. And also, you know, with all the hashtags, things just um, bubble up. So what, what I just want, want to say, basically, I, I want to still draw us back to that um, scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So, wow. guess what? The performance will never be over until, it's until we get to heaven. It's continuous. So, if you think that this, this performance will get over, it's never going to be over. Because there are different cycles, there are different directions, there are different things. You have different callings, there are different things you're going to be doing at different times. Is it is it going to be rough sometimes? Is it going to be tough? Are you going to get discouraged? Are you going to get frustrated? Are you going to be angry? So one, one, um, one tool that I have that I have now that I use is gratitude. Gratitude. I don't gratitude. have learned that this is something that in the past few months I've been learning. So instead of me looking at the fact that I don't have that house, I don't have that five bedroom house. I focus on the fact that I have a two bedroom house and I am so grateful to God. So I'm, I'm cultivating gratitude, being grateful for what it is that I have, where it is that I am and where he's taking me to. And guess what? The king, you're a man. Charles, you're a man. If, you, if, if I keep hailing you, I keep thanking you, I keep you know, just blowing up your head. What will you do? <laughs> Even before I ask, you ask me to do half of my kingdom. What do you want? To? So, so, so that's one secret I've learned. Being grateful for where I am. There was a time when people tell me I'm blessed, and I know I am. There was a time when I had to ask God, why? And he said, you always come back to thank me. So when I say I'm blessed, it's not that it's easy. It's tough. Do you understand? It's tough. But I've learned to focus on the good things that he has done. Another thing that he's also done for me is when I think that I don't have, he just highlights to me someone that is is in a worse situation. Do you understand? Right. He <laughs> just highlights that to me immediately. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. Oh, because when I think that I only have ten, uh, maybe uh, fifty thousand in my account, and he just highlights to me somebody that twenty thousand naira can change this person's life. So immediately I, I I'm able to realign and go right. to that. Yeah. So I always say the reward is there. It may not be where you are right now, but be patient. Be patient. The reward is certainly there. Then there's another thing I also tell people. If you look around you, how did I pay my school fees? I don't know. How did my school fees get paid? I don't know. How did, how did I get to where I am right now? I don't know. God will sort you out. 
you don't you will just be i remember one of the days i was at home and in, in university and I, I didn't have the money to go into hostel and my uncle came from the east come straight to the house I, I said i don't have money for he just counted the money gave me to school and he leaves the house immediately wow yeah and that's how you just find out that your needs are met well you can't be angry you can't be bitter you can't be upset you have to give your heart of gratitude grateful for all god has done wow 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 wow, wow. <laughs> You know, all I hear resonating in my head are the two most powerful words that you share. Be patient. Don't walk off the stage out of your emotion. Mm -hmm. The performance is not over. The ovation is on its way. Yeah. yeah. What incredible things that you have shared with us. Uh, you, you know, I can't Thank wait you. to unravel the box of gratitude. Ladies and gentlemen, did you see that box that Ola shared with us? the box of gratitude i'm going to unbox it be grateful for what you have be yeah. grateful for where you are and be grateful for what is yet to come wow yeah. that <laughs> is the box of gratitude unboxed by ola i want to thank you so much ola i'm going to read the yeah. life class for um one more time for everyone yeah. else and when i come back I will do the credits and then we'll call it a day. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So let's listen to the live class once again. Is the performance over? Life is a play acted on a stage. Every phase is a scene. Some scenes are fast. Some are slow. Some scenes make you cry, and some make you laugh. You can never understand the play from one scene. While the audience may be confused, the scriptwriter is always abused, yeah. and the actors must keep acting. Some things do not make sense in your life today. Yet your life can still make great meaning tomorrow as long as you remain in the play. The ovation of the audience is loudest at the end of the play, but not at the end of the scene. Why do you want to return? Why do you not want to return to the scene? Is the performance over? No, it is not. <laughs> life class with chance. Yeah. All I want to thank you for doing us the honors of coming on the show. Thank you. You have shared your wealth of knowledge in just a little over an hour. Your entire life story has been masterfully expressed. And I am sure that somewhere, someone somewhere along the line will find this as an anchor with which yeah. they will rise to the top and with which they will be able to survive the storm. We are so very grateful that you found time to do this with us. And every question that has been a fallout of this conversation, I will share with you and share with my audience as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of the life class with Charles. Are you depressed? Are you frustrated? The performance is not over. All you need to do is hold on. Open the box of gratitude. Then be grateful for what you have. Be grateful for who you are. And be grateful for what is yet to come. Until I come your way again next week, remember, all you need to do is be the best. The very best. <laughs> Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>